we've been alluding to free energy and equilibrium, pushing the reaction to the right to reach equilibrium or pushing it to the left to reach equilibrium. We're going to re look at um, the actual numeric and calculation relationship between Gibbs free energy and equilibrium. I want to start with this question just to get you thinking, okay? Um, if we have that equation, okay, and we, we know that whether the delta G standard is positive or negative, eventually the reaction will go either one way or the other and establish equilibrium. That's going to happen eventually. It wasn't at equilibrium under standard state conditions. It's either going to proceed to the right towards products because the delta G is negative, be spontaneous in the forward direction, or if delta G standard is positive, it's going to proceed towards the reactant side to eventually reach equilibrium. It will eventually get there. Okay, now once it's equilibrium, which one of those four statements must be true? Well, I hope that you understand that once it reaches equilibrium, the delta G is zero, okay? So we'll choose one of those with the delta G is zero. And that, rea that reaction quotient, which is products over reactants raised to the power of their coefficients, once you reach just equilibrium, products over reactants raised to the power of their coefficients is the equilibrium constant. So at that point of equilibrium, the Q becomes K. So let's keep those two things in mind and let's derive a new equation. Starting with that equation, I'm going to replace the plain old delta G, not the standard delta G, that doesn't change, that's a snapshot of where it would be if everything was at one atmosphere or one molar. So that doesn't change, but once it reaches equilibrium, delta G becomes zero. And once it equal, reaches equilibrium, Q becomes K, and I'll put those pieces in there. Now, I don't like the way that looks, so I manipulate it just a little bit. This equation is the same as this equation. Delta G standard equals minus, why is it minus? Figure that out. Minus RT natural log of K. And that is our equation that we need to commit to memory. We just keep adding equations that have delta G's in them. This is one of many for you, but this has got a very specific use this equation does, um, and we'll talk about that as we proceed. Before we talk about its use, you need to make sure you understand this. You're not going to get the right delta G out unless you use Kp if it's gases, and you use Kc if it is aqueous. You have to use the right K. Now for some reactions, the Kp and the Kc are equal, that's what would matter, but that's a rarity, but you've got to keep that straight. This is a must, must thing to remember. It's hard to keep, it's, it'll slip out of your memory and you'll get the wrong answer and you'll not know why because you use that equation. It seems fairly straightforward. It's probably because you did not use the right value of K. Now let's look, and let me come over to the screen here, and let's look at this a little more closely and see what's going on here. I have a very simple reaction where A is turning into B. On the left side, I have a situation where K is less than 1. Now, if you remember K, it's products over reactants, right? Raised to the power of their coefficients. We know that, so if it is less than 1, this thing favors uh, reactants. You're going to have more reactants, okay? Now, we know that if everything started at 1, Okay, and it wanted to get to equilibrium, so our K, if we start under standard state conditions, our pressures would all be 1, and if we did products over reactants, we'd have a Q of 1, and we know it's got to get to a K that's less than 1. If it started with 1 and 1, it's going to have to proceed to give me a value where this is bigger, so it's going to have to go and favor in the direction of reactants. So that's what's going to happen according to my K argument versus my Q argument. So if I started here where I had one of both reactant and product, it would proceed to the left. What it's proceeding to is a minimum free energy. Whoops, I don't know why that's over here. Oh, goodness gracious. Let's look at the left-hand side since that's the one I'm talking about. 
Now, if it's going to proceed to the left, it's proceeding to a delta G being greater than zero. That's what, if you start under standard state conditions and it proceeded, the reaction proceeded to the left, that's what happens when delta G is greater than zero. And it will shift to a, some minimum and it'll get to a point where it's at equilibrium. So whenever K is less than one, we know it favors going to the left. Whenever delta G is greater than zero, we know it favors going to the left. Over on the right hand side, we have a situation where the equilibrium constant is greater than one. So if we started everything off under standard state conditions and we started here with one atmosphere of both and we needed to go to where we had a, a K greater than one, we know we need to go towards products. We have to have more products than reactants. So it's going to shift to the right to get some minimum free energy here that it is striving for um, until you have more B than you have A. Now if it's going to be proceeding to the right to get to equilibrium, we have a standard delta G less than one. I mean zero, it's negative. So this is a summary of things that we've learned along the way. First of all, we learned about how K versus Q tells you which way the equilibrium is going to shift. And then we learned about the magnitude or the sign of delta G and that telling you which way it's going to shift. This is tying them together and they are very definitely tied together with the equation that we had on the previous screen. So back to this equation and all these relationships that we just examined, okay? If K is greater than one, we know that products are favored over reactants. If delta G is negative, we know products are favored over reactants. This middle part is what gives us the sign information here. If K is greater than one, then the natural log of K is positive. If the natural log of K is positive, we know that temperature is positive, always has to be, R is positive, it always has to be, and then we change the sign and that gives you the negative value. Okay, so we see that playing out with the reaction, I mean with the equation mathematically. Well, if K is equal to one, then the natural log of K is equal to zero, and delta G would therefore be zero, and this means under standard state conditions, this would be very, very rare, under standard state conditions, if delta G is at zero, it happens to be at equilibrium when everything is at one atmosphere. Weird, might happen, doubt it, happens often. Okay, and then we have the last scenario, which is this. If K is small, well, when we talked about equilibria, when K is small, the reactants are favored over products, right? Products over reactants, you've got to have a lot more reactants. But let's think about it sign-wise here for this bottom statement. If K is less than 1, the natural log of K is negative. Well, this is positive, this is positive, and then we change the sign, and delta G ends up being positive. A positive standard delta G means that the reaction is going to proceed to the right. Reactants are favored over products. So they're all tied together very definitely. The K tells you which way the equilibrium is going to shift to get to equilibrium, Q versus K, and the standard delta G tells you which way it's going to shift. So what do we use this equation for mostly? It's for this fact. If you know K, you can calculate delta G and if you know delta G, and I should say standard delta G, then you can obtain the K. And we're going to do a couple different problems where we're going to see this being used. We're going to pull together stuff that we've learned in our past in order to use this equation with a couple good calculations. So let me advance the slide to our first one that we're going to work through. We're going to calculate the standard delta G for the process of dissolving this silver phosphate. So let's dissolve silver phosphate first. Ag3PO4, okay, is a um, ionic compound, and we're going to, ionic compounds are always soluble, I mean solid, I don't mean soluble. We're going to dissolve it into water and not very much dissolves. It is a highly insoluble salt, but we know that we can get a little bit to dissolve. We learned that in our chapter about 
um, aqueous solutions of insoluble salts. Okay? Now, what are we trying to calculate? We're trying to calculate a standard delta G. If I could calculate, if I could determine the K of this equilibrium, then I could determine the standard delta G. So I'm going to put that down here because that's eventually what I'm going to want to use. To get the standard delta G, I'm going to need to know the pieces there. And I'm going to use a different pen because I don't like the way that one is writing anymore. Minus R T natural log of K. So let's go back up here and let's see. R we know. Temperature, is it given to me? Oops, I forgot to give you T. Yes, I did. 25 degrees Celsius. So temperature I know. To get standard delta G, I'm going to get a K. Well, let's do an I C E table. I know that if I put in an excess of this, initially none of it's dissolved. I'm just dumping some in. And some of this would dissolve. For every one of those dissolved, I'm going to produce three of these, and I'm going to produce one of those. So I'd still have a bunch of this, an excess solid state still sitting in that, but I'd have three times the solubility and one times the solubility. And I know that the K for this reaction has a subscript of SP. KSP, because it's an insoluble salt, would be equal three times S, and then that needs to be cubed times S. Okay, now why that? Just as a reminder, it would be products over reactants raised to the power of their coefficients at equilibrium, and since this is a solid, I don't include it. This at equilibrium is 3S, this at equilibrium is S, and that tells me I cube it. Did they tell me the molar solubility? No. Molar solubility is in moles per liter. They gave me the solubility in grams per liter. So I've got another little work I'm going to have to do. And let me do it down here. To get the solubility, how much of this dissolves in moles per liter, I'm going to take the value in grams per liter, 6.7 times 10 to the minus 3 grams per liter. Okay, and then I'm going to take that value and say I want it in moles per liter instead. And I gave you the molar mass of 418.6 grams per mole. And that is going to give me my molar solubility. Let me look at my number here. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per liter. So we remember from our equilibria chapter that these need to be in moles per liter. I now have it in moles per liter. This is the same as 27s to the fourth power, s cubed times s. So it's 27 times my molar solubility of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 4. And that is going to be raised to the fourth power. And that's going to give me my equilibrium constant equal to... I don't have any idea. Let me pull my sheet back out. Equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 18. That is a very tiny equilibrium constant. That tells me this equilibrium lies far to the left, which we know is true for insoluble salts. If it lies far to the left, it tells me that if I started with one molar of each of these, it's going to proceed that way to get to equilibrium, so it better have a positive delta G. So let's see what the delta G standard would be. R, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Temperature, it says at 25, so it's 298 Kelvin. And the natural log of this very small 1.8 times 10 to the minus 18. This will give me a standard delta G equal to 5.5. Don't tell me I didn't get it. 5.5. <laughs> no, it's not on there. Um, <laughs> you figure it out, and you put your answer in. But I'll tell you this, it ought to be positive. This is negative, 
natural log of ne negative, it's going to be positive, and it's going to be quite positive. Now, let's do the next problem. A little magic, we've erased our board, and we've got a new problem to work here. In this problem, we are going to try to determine the equilibrium constant. It says it wants to determine Kp for that reaction. Now, Kp would be the right thing to do because these are in the gas state. So we're going to use the equation delta G standard minus RT natural log of K, and since they're gases, it will be a Kp value. So how are we going to use the data that they've given to us in order to come up with the K? Well, I need a delta G. Glory be, they gave me some delta Gs of formation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to determine the standard delta G of this reaction using the summation of the delta G of formation of products times the coefficient minus the summation of the delta G of formation of reactants times their coefficients. So I look at my products and I have PCL3. I have one mole of PCL3 and its value is a negative 286 kilojoules per mole. I have one mole of Cl2 as a product, okay? And the delta G, well, they didn't give it to me because it's an element, and elements are always Z, zero kilojoules per mole. And then I'm going to subtract my reactant, which is PCl5. I have one mole of the reactant, and I have the value given to me of a negative 300 and 25 kilojoules per mole. So when I calculate out the delta G value here, I have a value of 37 kilojoules. Okay, so now I know my delta G and I'm ready to come up here and put in what I know. If I put in, I'm gonna bring these on over, okay? So I have delta G over negative RT is equal to the natural log of Kp, and I'll deal with that natural log a little bit later. The delta G is 37 kilojoules. Well, that would be 37,000 joules. Why do I want it in joules? Because I have my 8.314 in joules. My temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, so it's 298 Kelvin. Okay, and that's going to give me the natural log of K, and it's going to be the Kp. When I take all of that on the, um, all of these values right here, and I divide them out, I get a negative 14.9, and that is equal to the natural log of Kp. Now, how do I get rid of the natural log? I take the E to both sides. Okay, E to both sides. That will give me these guys canceling out, and it will give me a Kp value equal to 3.3 times 10 to the minus 7. Now, before we let go, let's see if we have a connection. We have a delta G standard that's positive, which means equilibrium is going to shift towards reactants in order to get to equilibrium, and we have a K that's very negative in its power, which tells me it's much less than one, tells me also that the equilibrium would shift to the reactants in order to get to equilibrium. But final statement here is that this equation's real job, what he really is designed to do is to help us get between standard delta G and the equilibrium constant.